the rule for recording. All right, we are live. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another session of the Sensu Community Chat. This is our bi-weekly-ish uh, time to catch up with each other, see what's happening in our community, get to know new people, um, occasionally uh, get some good rants out of Ben, aka Major Moses. Uh, but <laughs> this one's a special one. It's uh, you know week before the holidays are really kicking off. Um, so just did a bit of a rundown. And let's uh, let's pull up the old agenda. Excuse my, I've got a, a nice new big screen, so I'll try. Tell me if you if I need to up the resolution. You're good. Cool. Looks good on a 4K. So. Oh, I'm now. I feel like I shouldn't brag about my screen. <laughs> <laughs> Pixel peeping. <laughs> Pixel peeping. I like it. So uh, the plan today. Uh, I'll, I'll do a little community rundown, just a, a few observations of what's been up in our, in our space. Um, ben has some time to walk through a major initiative that's been vacant for a while. Uh, he's going to dive deeply into plugin testing and how we've been resolving quite a bit of that. There's also a lot going on in the plugin community around RFCs, requests for comments. Um, and some of them are merged, others are uh, in discussion right now. So that's the overall. Um, before we get rolling, anyone else have things that they want to bring up that we should throw on the agenda? Cool. All right, let me start by stealing the show. Assuming this plays out. Okay, cool. So community rundown, a little bit of news, a little bit of alpha update. And since Sean's hanging out, I'll probably put him on the spot, ask him to talk about it instead of me. Uh, and a little bit more about what's going on in the community space. I'll open chat to and see. Oh, James is out there. Didn't see a screen. I think that's a sn snowman. I'm not sure it's too small. <laughs> it looks like it, it's just a hand for me, but okay. He can speak up if he's got some. No worries. Uh, so here are a few things I noticed since we last talked. The Sensu 1.2.0 release is exciting. There's some things happening in Ansible land uh, that I want to point you to. A little bit more progress in the alpha, and we're seeing the light towards the beta, the open beta, and tons more in testing I already uh, talked about. And I thought for a thematic picture, I thought uh, the, the Christmas Hanukkah dreidel wielding uh, Octo Kid. GitHub is a personal favorite. This is not an official one. It's one I made a few years ago <laughs> and posted on the internet, and they haven't sued me yet, so I think it's cool. Um, but happy holidays, everyone. We're not going to have another session in two weeks because it's right in the middle of the, the flow for everyone. But we'll, I'm sure, as many of you do, uh, when you have time off, you'll probably be hanging out more often in the community as opposed to less. Uh, so come hang out. We'll maybe do something around the holidays and, and hack on stuff together. Uh, so we'll, we'll still be out there on GitHub, but hopefully people will also be enjoying some holiday snacks. Oh, excuse my cat. I guess she is offended by that comment. No. <laughs> uh, okay, so as I always do, I like to uh, say how exciting it is that we're growing. We hit over the 500 mark, which we thought we might by end of year, but we have over 500 Sensu users and fans in our Slack. Uh, it's 100 more since the last time we met just a couple weeks ago, which is pretty amazing. Um, the conversations have been awesome. Uh, I bring that up also not just to brag for us, but also to acknowledge like as we grow, the way we use it will change for sure. Uh, so if you have recommendations on channels that we need, um, by default, those aren't allowed uh, by everybody. And that's intentional so that each channel we have has a champion for it, somebody that's going to guide it and have the conversation be interesting. Um, so we like those to come through GitHub uh, requests on our community um, re mono repository, the slash community repository. So if you have ideas, share them either in the Monitoring Love channel or bring them up there. Uh, but thank you and keep inviting your friends and keep being awesome. Uh, next big thing, uh, 1.2.0 is out and about. Just want to make sure everyone was aware of that. It's now on the download page on our website. Um, one, uh, a couple cool features going on. Uh, don't need to dive in too deeply unless, Sean, do you want to give a little pitch for it? Why people should upgrade? Because it's the new shiny version. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, now we've unlocked a few cool things. I mean, scheduled maintenance is something that, I mean, since you should have had for a long time, 
Um, it's so, it was such a simple addition to do. Uh, it's nice to have it in there. Uh, I mean, now you can effectively silence one or more subscriptions and checks ahead of time. Uh, and I mean that that is a common practice amongst a lot of operations teams. Um, the stuff around the X request ID, I mean, this is another um, addition we should have made a long time ago. Makes it much easier to uh, draw connections between requests to the API and actual actions in the log. Uh, just a, another small addition that uh, you know adds quite a bit of value. Uh, and then it was uh, just bringing up some other uh, features and endpoints up to up to a decent standard. Uh, the results endpoints now include check history, uh, which is in the original. Um, I think it was clients check or yeah clients client check slash history. Uh, so now that's just rolled into results, which makes a lot more sense. Uh, yeah. And then uh, token substitution can now use our check source can now use token sub. Uh, and validation even tries to save you from yourself in the event that you inject uh, invalid um, attributes or invalid characters into your potential client names. So uh, just some cool stuff there. Overall, it was a, a fun, really lightweight release. I mean, if you're on 1.0 and forward, um, upgrading is easy peasy and uh, there's not really any friction there. Cool. Very cool. Thanks. Okay, uh, next up, really amazing work coming from Jared. He stepped up as the, the lead maintainer of our Ansible um, kind of ecosystem for Sensu. He opened a very thoughtful RFC about where to go from here. Uh, it is uh, truncated here because it's, it's pretty long and very uh, aware of the, how Ansible users work, how Sensu users work, and where do we want all these parts to be. Um, so if you have some time, if you're a user or even casually interested in config management, we'd love you to weigh in on it. Uh, the RFC is out there. It's um, 118 on the community repo. And then our little regular update on where we are in the beta. We're slowly but surely moving forward towards January. Can't believe it. Um, and just a reminder that the next milestones are in Q1. Uh, don't have a specific date for you yet but uh, we will have a beta of backend client CLI and then a closed alpha of the dashboard like we did uh, this current round. And then by Q3, we'll have commercial support for uh, Sensu 2.0 along with the public beta of the dashboard. And if you're interested in more details, Sean just recently released a blog post on that called The Road Ahead for Sensu. It goes into great details of just how much we've achieved with Sensu Core in the last year. I mean, we're hitting the milestone of 1.0 and then the many features that you may or may not be using. Uh, so it's, it's definitely worth reviewing what those are and why that's interesting. And then he talks about where we're, we're going with the 2.0 release. I guess the major thing to take away there is that with um, 1. Dot, excuse me, I think it's 1.3, right, Sean? 1.2 1. 1. Uh, introduces okay. the final features that were planned. There we go. Yeah, 1.2, the one that just dropped, is the one that uh, meets the, the bar that we set our, uh, for ourselves before um, focusing new features on 2.0 only. So 1.2 is that release. Uh, there are bug fixes and other things will definitely come in through there and will be continue to be supported for a while by our community. Um, but primary, the primary focus will be on the next gen uh, coming from here. Really exciting change. And if you haven't seen it already, uh, a couple sessions ago in the community chat, Sean did uh, a pretty awesome demo of what Sensu looks like on top of Kubernetes um, and using it with the, the Prometheus collector. Uh, so if you're wondering how that all goes together, you should definitely click on that link. It'll get you right to the, the exciting part. And then last but not least, community update, I want to keep uh, reminding us all that we use the community repo as a way to very easily uh, find um, what's exciting, what's new, make a request, uh, get more involved if you have time to be a maintainer or want to contribute to a particular plugin. Um, all of that is aggregating in this one place. So a couple things that have been major have been progress in our testing uh, for Sensu plugins in particular. Um, and I don't need to say anything because Ben's going to say more on that. Uh, and then the next thing that's super important to me is wrapping the head around 
where are all of our documents hiding and what does it look like to bring them into one place? Um, we are committed to sensu-plugins.io documents and documents from other repositories that are important, like the community ones we're curating, will be on a website together. Um, the exact way in which that plays out is uh, still in the works and that you can follow this issue in order to keep track of that. And that is it. Um, I did want to throw it out there. Are there any cool tips, tools, blogs that you've been reading that have been interesting to you? Okay, in a moment of self-indulgence uh, here, I will tell you that I wrote up some, oh, it's not gonna be good there if I grab this one. Uh, be easier to find here. I did write up a, a blog post on the cultural side, the technology side of uh, KubeCon last week. I was at the Kubernetes conference uh, last week, just repping Sensu, talking to people about the monitoring landscape. I haven't processed all my thoughts there. I, I will happy to do one-on-one -on -one conversations with you if you're interested in it, like where I think we fit and how we're playing in the cloud native ecosystem. But on the cultural side, I just noticed some some points of interest in the Kubernetes community that really hit home for me. Uh, things that I think will hit home for you too, like how they're celebrating that Kubernetes is getting more boring uh, and uh, other nuances to how their culture mm -hmm. is impacting the progress in the software side of Kubernetes. So that whole thing really interests me. I wrote a post about it. Love you to read it if you're interested. Just figured I'd throw that out there to start. And if anyone ever wants, has a sensory related blog post, but is a little gun shy about writing it, I'm always here to help there. Uh, ben and uh, Mike have taken me up on that and love their work so far. There's more to come. So keep it in mind, if, uh, even if you just like scratch something down on a text file, you can shoot it my way and we can always refine it. Cool. All right, next up is Ben. We're well, talking about some of his work. Um, on those blog posts in particular and what that means for plugins. Okay, cool. Um, so I didn't really actually prepare anything to talk about, so yeah. this will be fun. Um, so let me just go ahead and um, do you have those links uh, handy? Uh, uh, to the blog? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Let me grab that for you. It's like as if you. As soon as you said that, my website loading slowed down. <laughs> Naturally. Well, I mean, you can grab it from the blog.sensuapp.org. Shoot from the hip. <laughs> Nothing quite like it, right? Um, all right, so let me just pull these up. Um, uh, here's this one. Yes. And then this one. So um, basically, you know, kind of these two uh, posts um, probably should have been put in different order in what I just put it in the chat um, because one of them is really kind of trying to help you understand the philosophy of infrastructure test automation um, and why it's super uh, important for us as a community to continue to have, you know, stable uh, plugins that, you know, you can go to the community and just rely that it'll work as opposed to kind of what happens right now. <laughs> um, so, you know, kind of the first one is really just talking about the philosophy of kind of um, the different types of testing, where they're effective. Um, and then the second one, uh, the writing uh, sensory plugin tests with uh, test kitchen and server spec. Um, this is definitely a fairly deep dive. There's probably more detail that could have been included, but I felt like uh, if you've gotten this far, you don't need all of the details. Um, but basically, um, what we're standardizing on for uh, integration testing, which is what we're going to use for all of the different uh, community plugins, um, is using uh, Test Kitchen uh, along with uh, Kitchen Docker as the driver. 
um, and integrating that in with server spec. Um, basically, this gives us a really nice, easy way to, um, you know, make tests very easy for people with a, you know, kind of more traditional sysadmin background that maybe like the minute you say test automation, they're like, uh, no, no, this is all complicated. Our spec, that's hard. Um, you know, so I put together um, some pretty good examples on how to test some really basic universal things. Um, and uh, I've also added some examples to the skeleton repo as well. Um, so you can check that out as well as kind of just read through this. Um, it's pretty in depth, um, but the end result is that it's very easy to uh, write out a check. Um, you know, so just pulling an example here, uh, let me share my screen. All right, so can you guys see this? I can. Okay, so just a really simple example, DNS, right? It's a pretty universal uh, technology. I tried to not use anything that required a lot of domain-specific knowledge, no pun intended there. Um, you know, but basically, you know, I want to run this command. Its exit status should equal zero and it should match some text, right? Um, conversely, if I don't, you know, pass in the domain, um, it should return an unknown, right? With the following text. That's really easy to write, um, you know, very easily understandable tests. And these, you know, um, are often very real tests. Um, sometimes we do need to mock the data where it's, you know, overly complicated, where spinning up, say, like a full DCOS cluster with running containers inside of containers uh, is a little bit overkill. And so we can uh, pretty easily stub that data with something like Nginx. Um, so if you do have kind of a, a hard use case and you need some help, you know, feel free to reach out to me or any of the other maintainers who have um, some experience doing this. But um, I, I'm super happy to kind of see this start to kind of come together because, um, you know, it's something that I've been pushing for in my own organization um, the last year and a half really heavily. Um, and since, since we did that in our organization, we've gone from, you know, uh, we, we've caught so many potential outages. Um, you know, even if they weren't customer impacting just internal services, um, it's just really great to be able to um, write code and be able to have confidence that when you're refactoring something or you're modifying some behavior that, um, you know, uh, I as a maintainer, as reviewing it, right, I, I can have some confidence that, okay, well, you didn't break it to the point where, you know, it doesn't work anymore, right? Your new feature may not work, but your existing features work exactly as they did last time. Um, so, you know, uh, feel free to read through this. Feel free to hit me up in Slack, um, you know, and uh, I'm more than happy to kind of help really uh, make this easy for people to do. Like I said, I've, I've updated the scale to include some of the basic uh, testing structure and all that kind of stuff. Um, really, once you've once you've uh, bootstrapped all of the framework for a particular repo, it's really simple to start adding tests. So, um, come hit me up when you want to get started with that. There's a couple of open issues um, talking about uh, that that have a list of all of the repos that have not had appropriate testing uh, pushed out to. So, um, definitely lots of work. That if you guys want to jump in. Uh, more than happy to collaborate with you guys and I don't have the time to do push it across 200 repos myself. So um, definitely kind of a, let's work together on this. So. Um, very, very, very cool. Yeah. Thanks for, I mean, thanks for writing this especially, but also just highlighting it. Right. I think you've, you've made it approachable. Um, and if people, I'm more of somebody like I need to understand the principles before I can put things into practice. That's why I love that Ben put together two posts of kind of like why are these organized the way they're organized and then here's an example of how to do it if you're willing to run through it. So whether you're really good at Ruby or you've never written a line, uh, you can definitely be 
participant in this and make a difference. So uh, uh, I think he's navigating to the issue that is the the mega checklist of all the things. Um, but I like most advice: start with what you know. Start with the plugin you use regularly. Uh, and if you if you if there's tests already there, write a test. Write an additional test that covers something. Um, this is definitely something we can do iteratively and make a lot of headway um, without feeling intimidated by just the quantity of things you could do. Yep. Cool. Um, yeah. yep. Lots of choices, Sean says. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, Ben. Um, any questions about uh, plugin testing as it currently exists or how to get involved? <laughs> um, one thing that's not really testing related um, was that I wanted to start putting together some best practice stocks as well. Um, I don't know, did you want me to segue into that? Yeah, go right ahead. Um, so um, I have, I just need to find it because, so like I said, I was uh, putting in some additional skeleton, uh, you know, stuff in, and there's another one as well. Um, this is what Sorry. happens when I'm not prepared. All right. Um, where was that? Is that under? What are you looking for? I, I created a PR the other day for uh, some best practices. Maybe it's under document. Oh, it's still an open PR on the community page. Okay. So it's a PR. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so here's uh, kind of just wanted to tackle two specific uh, best practices. Um, some of you will notice that uh, I sound like a broken record when I say keep pinning your versions um, because that is the only way to make sure that things will continue to work. Um, so I wrote up a little doc about, um, you know, uh, how to do that with various uh, technologies. Um, so if you're using um, Chef or Sensu install, et cetera, it talks over every different way, SaltStack, Ansible, um, you know, kind of how to do that, how to not use Yolover, uh, which is basically not pinning your versions. Um, and it, the only guarantee with Yolover is that your stuff will break. Um, it's not a matter of if, but when because we use semantic versioning. Um, and because of that, if you do not pin to at least the major version, uh, we are going to, you, you will just break. That is just a fact. Um, that's fine if you want to do that in your dev environments, but please, please, please in production, never, you know, always pin it to either an exact version or use some sort of pessimistic version constraint, um, which that's talked a little bit about there. Um, and then the other one was, um, you know, and I have to give the credit over to, uh, Cameron was, um, something that a lot of people have asked for is how to deal with, uh, community plugins that require the use of, you know, say a C compiler, um, you know, or something of that nature. How do we get those pre-compiled, uh, artifacts out there so that they can be installed without a compiler? Um, so here's an example, uh, doing that with CentOS, um, when I have some more time and people are interested, um, I will put together a similar for, um, uh, Debian based since those are probably the two most targeted systems out there. Um, so, uh, feel free to read through this and, um, this is kind of really just the start of, you know, kind of fleshing out all of these best practices. Um, and, uh, definitely, um, you know, reach out to us if you feel like there's something that we're not touching on because, um, you know, as having used Tensu for like four years, uh, I take a lot of stuff for granted. Um, and so, you know, uh, when you say stuff like, Hey, you know, uh, this isn't clear. It, it's, it's not that I'm trying to, you know, make you, you know, Basically, I just don't know what I need to document in some ways because I just know I don't know what I don't know. <laughs> um, so, uh, definitely, you don't know what you know. <laughs> well, 
I'm playing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I, <laughs> yeah. um, so yeah, just, you know, feel free to reach out. Um, you know, I do have some time, um, over the next few weeks with the holidays, um, to try to, uh, put forward some better documentation and some stuff like that. So definitely looking for particular topics where, you know, someone's like, Hey, this is how I deploy it on AWS behind an ELB with these things, whatever, you know, um, we can kind of collaborate on that if you guys want. So. Very cool. Thanks, Ben. It's a um, amazing effort. And uh, it just continues to reiterate that like, yeah, we're consolidating inside this repo for now, since we do have a lot of different uh, versions of truth across different documents. So uh, the more we can consolidate into this, ultimately rev that into a great single source of truth on a one web page, we will do that. But uh, that is why we have an issue open for that. And uh, instead of like saying, well, let's wait until we're done with everything and everything's perfect before we share stuff. That just doesn't fly for any of us. So um, blog posts are going to continue to be awesome forums of like point in time, like this is how this works. And then uh, docs inside that repo will be handy for one of those things that we know we want to mature and continue to own as a community. So thanks, Ben. It was awesome to show. Um, a few more topics to run through. I think they're mostly on you, though. So I'm going to keep just hanging. <laughs> it's, it's okay, your show, let, me, let me steal <laughs> back. The... What was that, Sean? <laughs> I said it's your show, Ben. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's like, <laughs> I'm just going to hang out, you know, pet this cat. Uh, it's a lot of attention. So uh, I've got a couple of RFCs out there. Some of them are closed. Some of them are not. Um, so, um, I'll talk about the closed ones first. Um, so basically, um, you know, in light of, uh, the Apple, uh, vulnerability that happened several weeks ago, um, I kind of started thinking and was going, well, we follow Semver extremely strictly in general. Um, but when it came to security related uh, releases, I, I kind of had a little bit of, um, you know, I felt like there needed to be something we needed to outline our philosophy on when we are faced with a security related change. Um, are there scenarios where we are okay with um, breaking, you know, with intentionally breaking uh, Semver uh, spec um, and what that process looks like? Because I, um, I'd rather that we have a process and we think about it now um, as opposed to someone being under live fire and having to make a decision that's going to break clients. Um, you know, I, I generally uh, tend to be very much on the side of, um, you know, never break someone. Um, that being said, when you're faced with a very serious security issue, um, you know, you, you sometimes have to make certain judgment calls. And so um, I put out and discussed with a couple of different community members um, what our stance was. Um, and as part of that, I uh, created a pull request um, and that's been merged. Um, so basically, um, in general, we will follow Semver uh, in the case of something extremely uh, glaring, like a, um, it, you know, uh, credential leakage or um, backdoor or very serious vulnerability will make special considerations. Um, and uh, in order to get that pushed through, it requires uh, at least two maintainers to sign off on it, one being an org wide maintainer. Um, and the reason for that is because we want to make sure that we have a consistent, um, you know, feel throughout it and that we don't try to break people where possible, but in this, in the name of, you know, kind of security, sometimes we need to do terrible things. Um, so. <laughs> uh, I feel like this is a good moment to remind everyone, everything's fine with Sensu. <laughs> this is very much <laughs> an yeah. acknowledgement of like, wow, things are getting real sometimes. So uh, I love the, uh, you know, do it before it's a problem. <laughs> right, and, and, and um, the, only, the only thing I'll say is that there's no major, um, 
issue like that with Sensu at the moment. There are some minor uh, vulnerabilities in a bunch of them through Rebocop, which if you install without dev dependencies, you won't have in a production environment. So it's a very low vulnerability. Um, and it's not something that we would consider for this, but at the same time, it is what kind of jump-started that thought process of, okay, should we consider this so that we don't have Windows XP all over again that's running 14 years after Microsoft has supported it on mission-critical systems, right? Um, that's just not doing a ser uh, service to our customers. So that's really where this kind of came from, It's a combination of those two things. Love it. So good uh, info. And uh, that does fall right into that last part that there is a, uh, a dependency on RuboCop across all our repos. Um, it's not a runtime dependency. It's a testing dependency. But uh, that said, 0 0.48 of RuboCop was flagged as having a, a, a CVE apply to it. So we're slowly rolling out those updates. Um, the the yeah, we bring that up for awareness. I mean, ideally that's not even in your environments, but we also don't live in an ideal world. So just be aware of that. Yep. Um, next RFC I'll talk about is uh, how we update users when we do have security vulnerabilities discovered in the community. Um, I'd like to actually just kind of just open it up for discussion and kind of see what people are doing, um, you know, what would kind of make the most sense to not um, overload you with information, but at the same time, you know, make sure that you ha have the appropriate notifications when there is a security vulnerability that you um, have patched or are, or are in need of patching, I guess. So, Matt, do you have any particular forum or format that makes sense for this? Since no, since you open it up, um, just see if anyone has an opinion uh, on basically what are the best channels to subscribe to. Uh, I think by default, we can assume two things. Well, no, I don't want to assume anything. I, I do want to say like we have default two options that are maintained right now, which uh, we could always put things out in the announcements channel on Slack. Uh, we also have the option of the Sensu users mailing list. Um, but yeah, we've got a representative group of users right here. So uh, would either of those be good places to start in this group's opinion, or are there other ones that come to mind? And my rule, Ben, is I give it, give it about 50. Slack channel would be great. All right, that's it would be yeah. cool. Yeah. Slack works for you. OK. All right. Is there any other channels that make sense? You know, something like an RSS feed or um, something that you know you're kind of already using. Um, I'm kind of out of the security space, but when I used to be in the security space, what I did half of my day was reading RSS feeds, looking for vulnerabilities, and then go going and patching stuff. Right. So, um, you know, I just want to be aware that not everyone is kind of, you know, in that same boat. So just whatever makes sense for people. Um, also, you know, kind of along that line of, uh, you know, I don't want to blow up the announcements all that often, you know, um, if we have 200 plugins and it affects 200 of them, right. I don't want to post 200 messages. Um, you know, so kind of, uh, what, what makes sense to, um, to you guys as far as, uh, should there always be like a, um, you know, a blog post that goes along with it detailing, you know, what it is. And then, you know, in the announcements we say here, check here and then determine whether you need it because uh, those vulnerabilities could be across any of the sensor plugins. It could be across the chef cookbook, you know, Ansible, salt stack, sensu core, um, et cetera. So I'm kind of just trying to figure out what's the best way to kind of umbrella all of those different things, knowing that not everyone has the same needs and, uh, I don't want to piss off everyone who's maybe using like three of the Sensu plugins and are constantly being bombarded by all these other ones about security updates. Not that hopefully we would have that, but yeah. just, you know, putting it out there. I wonder how I just noticed uh, Jared's response about using GitHub's native feeds for releases. Right. Yeah. And so that's where I think it is 
a little bit difficult because then we would need to post on each individual uh, plugin or cookbook, et cetera, the vulnerability uh, there as well as that means that say, um, you know, if I use 45 different community plugins, I need to have 45 subscriptions uh, to those. Um, and there's a lot of noise on top of that, right? You know, uh, filtering out just the security related incidents, et cetera. So um, I'm really definitely looking for ideas of, because I don't have a great solution to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. So. So it, it sounds like it would be the, um, um, I mean, I guess the best of all worlds would probably be to set up the blog post where you can detail the issues that are going on. And then in the Slack channel, you can just refer to that blog post. And then if you really want to throw in, you can tie an RSS feed to it because I do grab info from there. Um, so that would be cool to be able to see that um, just whenever that comes out because um, that would be a good way for me to get that that info. Um, but it sounds like the blog post is going to be where you want to put the meat and then you just want to have pointers to it in the, in the various channels, whether it's Reddit or whether it's wherever else you put it. Um, and you can just refer back to that blog post. That way that can be kind of a central location. Okay. I like that. That sounds line. good. Um, Chris just had a suggestion, um, that I think is kind of, um, you know, uh, we can kind of make, you know, security, you know, we could make a security repo for plugins and a security repo for extensions, et cetera. Um, and then we would, you know, do kind of the same thing where instead of having it be a blog post, we would maybe uh, point it to the, you know, the appropriate repos, security repo. Um, and then that way, if uh, someone who wanted to subscribe to that could, um, you know, uh, subscribe to the RSS feed on there and then then there's at least some level of compartmentalization obviously the plugins is the one where that really will get noisy um, just because of the fact that you know there's 200 plus uh, plugins and re you know all those different things so um, you know that's that's kind of uh, maybe a middle ground there I don't know I'm yeah and I wasn't thinking any, anything uh, terribly automatable just that you know if we know we got something that's cross-cutting you know, the human being would actually have to go and update the repo, but uh, the gist being that you could you could subscribe to that, you know, subscribe to that repo and that repo only. Right. And for anything that's sort of across the board or like a holy crap, you need to patch now type of thing, you know, an update gets there. And then just to have some content in that repo, park best practices or whatever other things that we think people would be or would be useful in that case, right? Or for for related to security anyway. Okay. But in terms of like the more critical security stuff, could we not, or not, not me personally, but could you not build something into like the 2.0 dashboard to call out and sus essentially subscribe to them feeds and if there's a security so issue, saying, right, a sec the dashboard? Once you check to check the vulnerabilities, is that what I'm hearing? Because that's I, what I, I, guess, I guess that's a way, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's the way, or I, what I was hearing was like basically like a, an indicator of that yeah, that's what, what about security, about security yeah. feed. But then you get into a question of like, where is that security feed talking to in order to get the, those indicators? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, oh, we could, uh, yeah, we could kind of keep going down the turtles. Like, uh, at some point we're going to get to a turtle where it's like, we have some atomic thing that knows what updates need to happen. Um, but I love the idea. Uh, of like bringing it closer to the user in in dashboards. That's a very cool idea. It's the same thing with uh, updates as well for people who don't actually follow. You know. Yeah. Push messages to them. Yeah, sort of like um, I know that a lot of people, like uh, several companies out there, like HashiCorp, whatnot. When you're uh, running the when you're running their tools, they do a check to see if there are newer versions, and then they put in the log. You know running this, the latest is this, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so we could maybe do something similar, um, you know, uh, and eventually, you know, kind of long-term eventually create a Sensu check that would uh, scrape uh, GitHub labels or something like that so that we could say, hey, uh, have you applied, applied the security patch yet? Uh, look at that, uh, scrape what the version, the released version is from that. 
but that's a little bit longer term. I just don't have the time to dedicate to that right now, but that could be something really cool eventually that we would do. Cool. I like that. All right. So things are going to take away from this. I'll definitely bring up to Simon and the dashboard Uchiwa team on a uh, vision of what, what that could look like. If that's something that like would fit smoothly into the way they're designing it, or if it's a bit out of scope. Um, but then we can kind of think back to everyone else's conversation of what are things within our own locus of control here of platforms and tools that we can use to write up this stuff. Um, like how do we, how do we get the word out as a community is kind of the overall question. And like we have a few different tools, um, at some point we're gonna have to decide how much we like Google groups and if we're going to commit to using that as like a good communication mechanism or if that's too painful for like the visualizing the stuff and we need something like more like discuss where you can subscribe to a feed, like a security feed from there. I don't know. So. Uh, Chris. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing at the, the Oh yeah, yeah. You're good. The that's the that's the security mechanism. It's a yep. is a command. <laughs> uh the old RM. Okay. Cool. Well definitely a lot to think about. Maybe um Ben you can write down some of your takeaways from this on that RFC and we'll keep the conversation going. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um and then the last one which I opened just a couple of days ago. I don't know how interesting it might be for everyone else who's not a maintainer, but um, as far as Travis is um, concerned, they're going to be making some changes to some uh, some of the images. And so um, I kind of opened up a, an RFC to discuss whether or not we want the stable or the shiny. <laughs> um, you know, so uh, feel free to uh, go out to the community uh, uh, issue and just, comment on kind of what you want to do if you care um you know if you're not super familiar with it you know that's okay um so uh let's see so and then um yeah kind of just back again on the versioning stuff um is we actually have a document uh before we kind of just said we follow Semver, um, and we didn't really explain much about Semver itself. Um, so we did kind of write something out a little bit more and add a little bit of flavor context to it to make it a little bit easier for people to actually grok all of the things about Semver that, and importantly, where we disagree with Semver and where we create a process to, you know, intentionally break Semver. Um, but as a general rule, that'll basically never happen. It's more like I just need it just in case, you know, zero day horrible vulnerability is out there that we may just decide to patch that. And uh, you can still circumvent all of the things that I would do in that case by pinning your versions. So, uh, <laughs> I feel like that's the perfect note yeah. to end on right there. <laughs> yeah. So pin your versions because I will never yank a running version out there as much as I have to fight myself on it. So uh, pin your versions on exact versions and it'll never break. Pin it pessimistically and it hopefully will never break. Don't pin it, it will always break. So it's just a matter of time, so. Cool, all right, thanks Ben, that was awesome. A uh, ton of good info. Uh, the TLDR for me is like, there's a lot of decision-making going on. We have good processes around them and good places to connect with your peers on multiple channels. So um, those are always up for discussion as long as we are discussing them. Slack is kind of our epicenter because it's easy for us all to chat and banter together. Uh, and then we can take it wherever else we need to go. So um, feel like your opinions are very welcome. We're, we're in an iterative step for sure. Anything else people have on their mind? Yeah, I did have one question. Um, is there anybody that liaises between uh, our community and uh, the Grafana community? Um, the reason why I ask is I submitted the world's lamest PR, but it actually may, it's gonna make, enforce, whenever 4.7 drops, it's gonna significantly improve the, in, the interaction between the two because it, it was just sending a, a, a statically coded you know, Grafana metric threshold met or something like that as the output for any Grafana checks that you put in. 
now you know all I did was just change it from that that a static thing to point it to put it to the out um, output field. Cool. Whenever it's uh, shipping, whenever it's shipping the JSON, and you know, then you actually get your output from your check, you know, or or something more relevant, um, you know. That or I'm sorry, I take that back. It was um, there's a there's a free fo free form text field. That's what it is. There's a free form text field where you could put in like what this thing is about. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just in case the what you named the check wasn't terribly self-explanatory. Nice. So, but you know, they the the guy I talked to over there said that basically they really have no uh, no knowledge of Sensu at all. It doesn't sound like they have anybody, um, you know, in their camp that, uh, you know, that, that is Sensu aware. Yeah, let me um, shoot that my way. I know the whole team at Grafana Labs. Uh, I used to work on a project with them, like, uh, so spend some time with Torkel and Raj, like the, so, and many other engineers. So I can, I can ask them for help. Um, before I ask them to do anything with it, I just want to make sure, uh, have you been able to test it and run it? Um, yeah, yeah, no, I already submitted it. It's, uh, it's been merged. It's going to be in 4.7. Oh, so, okay. Um, um, so I'm Again, not it's a super, super simple change, but. So what uh, are you hoping to, get, hoping to get help with? No, I was asking if there's anybody from our community that, that keeps in touch with the Grafana community because the there's a few other things that I think could could be improved with the integration right oh. uh, with that but it wouldn't take a ton of effort um, you know to, to, to make it significantly nicer nice no uh, hit me up let's uh, talk more one-on-one -on -one. we don't have anyone right now to answer your question um, okay. we do have uh, Jason on the team who used to work at Grafana labs knows them I know them too but there's no one from our community that's kind of thinking about like what the day-to-day -day interoperability is. And that's where like you'd be the best one. Yeah. Well, my, uh, sounds like you are my, node in, my node and JavaScript skills are not, uh, not very good. So no, it's definitely, I feel like I'm painting my numbers every time I get in there. Just like that looks like a variable. I'm going to change the answer. Yes, it works. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. It's all good. Sounds good. Sorry, my cat is being super weird. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's done. Uh, good. No one would be right. meeting if you didn't have a cat interruption of some sort. All right. She's like scratching at my drawers right now, just thinking it's funny. Uh, any, anybody else? That's, that's a great, great follow up, Chris. Like, yeah, we should definitely think about that further. And whether that's an ongoing thing or just like, a, hey, why don't I set up a meeting with you and um, like, Dan, who's one of their core engineers, and to see if it, that aligns with their plans for a future release, that'd be awesome. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'll, to the extent I can, I'll, I'll volunteer on it just because having been in both sides, again, when it comes to the code, I might not be the best best uh, candidate in the world, but, you know, we'll see. It, they, they could, like I said, it, it probably a lot of little simple changes would, uh, it is really all that's required, not a wholesale rewrite. Good, good. Yeah, let's talk. Others? Anything else on your mind? Uh, yeah, I've got one quick thing. Go so ahead. I know there's a little demo somewhere of uh, Sensu Doc site running in with Hugo. True. I don't know if the plans to migrate to that anytime soon. Just, I mean, I think country into the docs is really easy, but there's no way to check your format at the moment, spin it up locally, see what it looks like that I know of. Yeah. Unless I'm missing something, I don't know. But um, I'm sorry, of the new or the old? Docs. The old one, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the old one, so uh, Sensu slash docs, uh, or Sensu slash Sensu dash docs uh, does not have its own um, runtime or like uh, any sort of web framework around it, unfortunately. Uh, what we do behind the scenes is uh, run a rake task that steals that, throws it into our website folder, and then runs it. The website has some other stuff in it and is a private one. Um, and the new one will be self-contained, where you can just spin it up on its own for sure, using Hugo. Uh, we're definitely kind of in between which platform is which. Uh, so what challenge are you running into right now, or what were you hoping to do? I just think uh, country and via the docs is pretty pretty good place to start for people, but it's a bit of a barrier when you can't check. You've got to submit a PR for someone to look at and then tell you the format's wrong or something like that. So. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I should say, I think on the docs, um, let me pull up the website. No. Let's do docs. 
I'll just share my screen so people don't just hear me narrating nothing. Um, from here. Oh no, you're totally right. Yeah, I've only done it from the website folder where like you can run a, a middleman task and it'll build that out. So unfortunately that is uh, our current state and will be for, I'm estimating about a month. Like we're actively looking to change that. That said, uh, the PRs that are on the Sensu Dash Docs uh, site, I'm reviewing today, merging in and getting them up and running. Um, and but un unfortunately, uh, we're just kind of stuck between right now. That's cool. No, thanks for bringing it up. It's it's super important, and I'm 100% with you that like the best way to get involved with an open source project, uh, regardless of Sensu or anything is just go try to use it, you use it and like, you know, there's a 5% diff between what you actually did and what the docs say and like just bring that diff up. Uh, I've done that on so many things and uh, yeah, we need to make that easier for us, which is why we're in the middle of a huge uh, website redesign. Cool. Uh, and for now, I mean, even if the formatting looks a little off, I think it's more important to get in the right content regardless of formatting. So if, uh, if a maintainer is kind of being a little bit of a, you know, pain to work with um, on that front, uh, you know, feel free to bring in other maintainers um, because what's not, what's important is not the, the format. We can, we can merge that and fix it up afterwards. Um, no, no reason to not get good doc in. So, um, you know, because, uh, you know, kind of as Matt said, like it is definitely the best way to get into open source and open source is notorious for poorly documented products, right? I mean, that's just, you know. Wow, we all I mean, love doc contributors, but. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the, it's, it's the least interesting thing for someone like me who likes to write, you know, the features and to build all mm. this stuff and fix stuff, but it's, you know, I very much recognize that it's super important, so. Um, you know, definitely feel free if if you feel like it's just becoming too much of a pain, just submit it and be like, uh, maintainer, fix on merge. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I am okay with that on docs. But you and caught it here and I've got it recorded. Yeah. I'm going to send that all my raw text. Yeah, gonna, <laughs> I'll get that little sound uh, bite right there of Ben saying that and we'll just keep that on file. So if you ever need it, Mike. Oh, I'm sure you'll use it against me. I, I guarantee it. Yeah, uh, same. I would. So cool. Um, That's a good one. And then uh, kind of just last thing I'll kind of mention is, you know, I, I've got some time off over the next couple of weeks. So if anyone wants to get together and do, you know, like a hackathon or uh, anything along those lines, you know, whether it's, you know, updating plugins or whether it's contributing to something else or, um, you know, how do I, build stuff with Chef and Terraform, you know, like whatever you guys kind of want to do, um, whatever you guys want to learn. Um, I do have some free time. So, uh, that's super cool. Um, yeah, maybe we can, uh, well, yeah, if people message you, I'm going to put it on everyone else. Ben just made the offer. If you want to learn something from him, whether it's Terraform and Sensu or like testing plugins or writing your own, hit him up within the next day. And then I'll talk with him about scheduling it, making sure there's a Zoom that, so we can record these and get them going after the fact. But it's on you first to hit him up to, so he knows what people want to cover and about when. And like we can try to set up some sessions and advertise them in the, in the Slack and online so that people know about it. That'd be really, really fun. I no guarantee I can make all of them the holidays, but uh, I think that's true for everybody. But uh, I think happy to make sure that people see those. And that's a very kind offer. Yeah. And, you know, I, I kind of do it the other way as well that, you know, there's definitely things I don't know. And if you feel like you found something really cool, I'd love to do a hackathon and collaboration session with you. Right. So it, it, to me, the street goes both ways. So. Cool. Cool. Sounds I fun. certainly don't know everything. <laughs> no one does. Love it. Yeah. All right, everyone. That was a, uh, really fun one. There's a lot of details happening. Really impressed with how much progress we've made in the last month and uh, 
it's kind of nice that we're, we get to roll into the holidays with some time to, to clean up those sharp edges on our docs and our code. Uh, if you need any help, we're all here in Slack. And with that, happy holidays and happy Hanukkah if you're celebrating tonight. And uh, happy all the things that are coming up next. So see you in the new year. We won't be holding one in two weeks. We'll have it back in January. Thanks, all. Thank you.